Hi everyone, my name is Naomi Human, and I'm here with Quality Sewing and Vacuum with our August 2022 Sew Fun. And let me introduce you to my new Sew Fun consultant this month. Hi, my name is Andrea Hayden, and I have been teaching down at the South End stores. And it's been really, really great, and I am excited to be a part of Sew Fun. Excellent. Well, I'm glad to have you here. Thank you. So I want to touch over a couple keynotes before we get started. So you're watching here on Facebook Live. We are all, you can also watch on YouTube later. Um, we are out of the Pacific Northwest up here in Washington. We have 11 stores that we travel around to every store and we do our live so fun presentations. We have a North End and a South Fun South End consultant. And all the products that you will be seeing today will be on our website until September 4th. Um, there is also free shipping if you spend $100 or more. And then another great opportunity. If you like, share, or comment today in this presentation while we're live, you will be entered in to win one of our door prizes. So let's jump in and we are going to talk about some notions. So I have a couple notions set right here if you want to take a look. The first one I'm going to talk about is the pinking blade. And the pinking blade is great if you are cutting lots of strips. Uh, I like to do scrappy quilting, so I will use the pinking blade and it has that nice little zigzag edge to it. And it helps keep everything clean so you don't have the little threads. Another notion that I like to have are wonder clips. So if you need to restock on your wonder clips, we have this in a 10 piece set and a 50 piece set. The newer ones, because someone pointed out to me, the newer ones have these little markings, these little measurement lines on them. Uh, the older ones, original ones don't have those. So some people like to use those to line up their binding. And so I like to use these on my binding because I can put these on and just sew and just unclip. Or if I'm sewing fabric that is more like pleather, I don't want to put a pin through that. So I will use the Wonder Clips. The another, another item is the 505 Temporary Adhesive Spray. So a lot of people like to use this when they're spray basting their quilts, or I like to use it when I am embroidering. So I will take a piece of stabilizer. So we'll pretend this is my, my stabilizer. So here's my stabilizer and I will mist my stabilizer and then I will take and put my fabric and then I'll hoop it and that will help it uh, from scooching around as you're trying to hoop it and stitch it. So 505 temporary spray is great and if you know me from Scan and Cut, you know I also like to use 505 spray when uh, I need to re-stick my mats. And now I'm gonna let Andrea talk about a few of the notions. All right, so my background in sewing is mostly apparel. And we're going to go down here and talk about these two marking tools. The first one we're going to talk about, sorry, is called Taylor's chalk right here. It is not your, your traditional chalk here. If you rub it with your fingers, it doesn't come off on your hands. It's more like a resin. It has three sharp edges. And I use this Taylor's chalk to mark a quilt, some nice long um, linear lines on there. But what I really love about this chalk is that it has its own little carrying case. So when you're using it, it doesn't fall on the floor. But as you're using it, your edges get dull. And then you turn it to the back on the case and you just rub the edges right like that and it sharpens your Taylor's chalk again. Now Taylor's chalk, is, since it is a resin, you want to use a wet washcloth to wipe it away when you're finished with your lines because if you iron it on accident, it is like ironing a crayon into your fabric. So keep that in mind. This you wanna take off with a wet washcloth. Okay, this is great. This is gonna last you for many years. The next one that we're going to talk about is the Clover White Marking Gel Pen. And this is a very fine tipped gel pen. Right here you can see a few weeks ago I did alterations on some 
wedding gowns. They were chiffon. So it was a very fine, delicate fabric. And I couldn't use this because it was too rough and too hard. But I was able to use this little gel pen and delicately mark the, the points that I needed to alter these dresses with. And it takes about 30 seconds for the, the gel to dry. I marked one side, went over to the other, marked the other, and by the time I came back to the first side, the, the gel had turned white. Now this is great for dark colors, but those dresses that I did were a very light, kind of dusty blue, and the white showed up there too. Now these pens are iron away, so you just take it right over to your iron, you iron it, and it just fades right away. So these I have in my arsenal at home. I have both because they both have very specific jobs to do. Okay, that's our gel pen. Next thing we're gonna move on over here to our fabric organizers. And we have three different sizes here. You can see how I've got fabric, um, three different sizes on here. This is the largest one that we have. I love this, I'm gonna flip it over to this side. I've used just a, a stretchy fabric here to keep my ends on here, but you can use a pin like I have here. I'm going to unroll this. And right here you can see that there's little tabs right here and right here that can hold my fabric in place while I wrap it around. And it keeps it, my fabrics from sliding off one way or the other. Then I just take my pin right here. And I actually just put the pin right into the board right there and it holds it right together. I like this one, the larger one, for putting different fabrics together that I've chosen that I'm not ready to use yet, but I can keep them organized together. This will go right into any shelves that you have. And it also holds full, uh, full fabrics. Like let's say you need to buy like three yards of fabric. A 54 inch wide fabric comes folded already. I fold it one more time and it wraps around nicely and it fits and stores great. You can also put these right into your bins so they say dust and smoke free. The other size that we have is for, I have on this one, I have bindings, quilt bindings on here. But this is really great for if you have ribbons or trims or any other things that you want to keep organized in that are small. You can see it has many little tabs on here to keep those all nice and organized. And if you don't have shelves, but you have a closet, you can hang these um, on little hangers inside of a closet too. And then this small one, this little guy is perfect for fat quarters. It's gonna keep your fabric nice for those smaller spots that you need but it also keeps your fabrics from getting all wrinkled and crumpled and unorganized so these are awesome i invested in them and it was worth worth it and they are actually really cheap too so a great way to organize cheaply right yeah. now over to naomi okay so the next thing i want to talk about is our little prop it guy and so this little guy is a portable hands-free uh, pattern holder. It comes with a little magnet board that you can then take your patterns and you can stick the magnets on, or you can have the little band here that will hold it in place. And you also have these little arms that will help hold them in place. So the way I tested it, <laughs> I was using it, I should say, is you know, I'm at my sewing machine and I'm sewing away. I put this right next to my sewing machine off to the side and I put my tablet on it and I watch Netflix as I sew. <laughs> Cause I mean, come on. A lot of us when we're sewing, we typically have something on in the background, something that you don't have to pay too much attention to, but it's nice to have that noise. And so this was holding my tablet just fine and it has more of an upright, but when you put a heavier book on it, on it or a tablet, it will squat down and it will sit like this. And then when you want to put it away, maybe you know, you're trying to quilt something, you can fold it up 
and you can put it away and it takes up very small space. So I really like it because I, it, it holds a lot of weight and then I can put it away and it doesn't take up space. So the first pattern we're going to talk about today is Ariel by Tamara Kate and this is our embroidery design and I'm going to walk you right over here and we're going to look at the wall hanging I made. So with this design, you will get 13 designs. And if you look at the back here, you get a nice variety of different flowers and plants and uh, bugs, cute bugs. And I did kind of stick with some of the color themed when I made mine. Uh, something to point out, very important. The largest design size is a 9.2 by 8.44. So just make sure you have a hoop that can do the largest one. And so right here, I made the wall hanging and I took the bigger design, I put it in the center. I did a couple brighter colors and then I used a couple of the same designs in the corners, as you can see. And I just kind of, I embroidered them onto pieces of fabric and then after they were done, then I kind of decided like, how, how big can I make this? What's the appropriate size? And I stayed in the Grunge family and I quilted it with just a simple leaf design. And then here's the back. You can kind of see the quilting a little more. And so that is called Ariel by Tamara uh, Kate. But let's go back over here and I'm going to show you another fun pattern. So we have drink cozies. And this is a drink cozy pre-cut batting kit. It comes with eight pre-cut pieces of batting. And I'll show you what they, so they look like this. And it comes with instructions on how to make them. And I love when they include pictures. And so right here, you'll see we made several different cozies and you can do different buttons. You can do different types of closures. I have a hair tie, we've got Velcro. And then here, this is a leftover from our mask making days for uh, going around your ears. And I like this one because it's adjustable. So I can wrap it around a cup and then I can uh, adjust it to really shrink it in. But Maybe you don't want to make a cozy. I'm going to let Andrea talk about a fun um, alternative. What, alternative, yes. So my background, I have been making costumes for a long time. And when I saw this shape, I thought, hmm, that shape looks familiar. So I actually had some fabric on hand and I cut down the shape a little bit. And I added some sparkle and Velcro to it to make some Wonder Woman cuffs. <laughs> so just in case you are needing a Halloween costume coming up, maybe you have some girlfriends or some grandkids that you want to dress up together. These came together in a snap. It was really, really easy, really fun. I just added some Velcro to each side a little bit adjustable right here and added a little star and did something a little outside of the box. So that's another thing that you can do with these dream cozies. All right, yes. over to Naomi. Nope. Nope. Oh, not over to Naomi. Now we're going to talk about Judy's six inch square um, pre-cut little fabric design. And this is Joy. I will reach right behind me right here. This is a little pre-cut, already printed little quilt panel right here in the middle. It comes in your little packet like this. I put it, I got a half a yard of some utility outdoor fabric. I made myself a little shopping bag out of it and I added the little pre-cut to a little pocket and added it to the front of my bag. Uh, now Naomi, is going to talk a little bit about hers, what she did with her quilt panel. You can put it in any, any project that you want to. She's coming over with it right now. And over to Naomi. Okay, so I took the panel and I created a little flag um, that I can put 
outside of my house. And so I just took the panel, added a little border, and then I created this scrappy border. And um, in a little bit, I'm gonna show you a demo of how I created this scrappy border. But I just, I tried to stick with scraps that were similar colors and it just goes together really quick and easy. And it's a great way to use a panel and use up scraps. So now we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to show you how I make my scrappy tape. So with scrappy tape, we have this material. It's called scrap tape and it's by the Gypsy Quilter. This one is two and a half inch strips and you get 25 yards here. So you get a lot. And what you do is I started sewing my scraps and it just keeps going. Every store I went to this month for Sew Fun, I just kept adding and you'll see some are straight and some are wonky and that's just because that's the style I was going with. And then you get to the tape. Now the tape is, um, like I said, it's two and a half inches. You can iron it. You wanna do more of a medium temperature iron and it is wash away. So no steam, do not put water on it until you really are done. So what I'm going to show you is I take my, I take my scrappy tape here and I've got it right over here and I'm going to grab a piece of my scraps. So let me find a color that's not purple. <laughs> okay, so I've got my right side facing up. So I'm gonna take my scrap, I'm gonna put my right side facing down and all I'm going to do is lay, lay it right on top and then I'm gonna position it and I'm going to sew it. And it's just going to take a minute. And then when I'm done sewing, you could, if you want to, iron it. But I find that I just fold it over and finger press. And then I move on to the next piece. And then I grab my next piece, right side up, right side down. And if you have something happen where the fabric comes down and it starts showing, the scrap tape, you just, the next time you sew, you just wanna sew it back a little bit and make sure you're covering that up. So it's very user-friendly, easy to work with. And I'm just going to sew this next one on. And I've even seen where some people like to, they'll take like small one inch scraps and they will sew a bunch of one inch scraps together and then they will attach it to their scrappy tape. So they just, you know, depending on where you are with your scraps, some people like really small scraps um, and some people want a little bit bigger. And so it's whatever scraps you have and you can create your own fun scrappy borders. And then what I'll do when I'm done is I'll flip it over and I take my two and a half inch ruler and I'll line it up with the tape and I use my pinking blade and I trim it down and then I have binding or borders made and ready to go on a quilt. And I am going to pass it over to Andrea and she's gonna talk about the next pattern. Okay, so the next pattern, we're gonna go walk over here to my dress and my blouse. It is called, it, it is the Sew House 7 um, company and it's called the Tea House Top End Dress. Let's come on over here and I'll show you all about it. Tell me about this. Okay, the first one I made was this dress. It is a light cotton denim and it came embroidered. And so I put the embroidery down at the end of the dress here. And then I had some extra, so I was able to use some up in the yoke part right here. The awesome part about this dress is that there are no buttons, there are no zippers, and no set-in sleeve. It has a, ki a kimono seam at the very top to make a beautiful dolman sleeve, a little cuff right here. If you undo, there are two different ways to tie this. I chose the, white, the wide tie because I like it, uh, but it also comes with a little, like, tiny spaghetti strap type of string 
tie that you can put on the back. But when you open up the pattern, it is like a moo moo. It is so wonderful and cozy to wear, comfortable, super comfortable. And it's flattering on any body type. And one of my favorite features about this is that it has pockets. I love it. Okay, so that is the longest version of this dress pattern. But then there's also the blouse. I made the blouse in a really nice chiffon, or not chiffon, rayon. Um, and it was kind of a busy pattern, so you can't really see the details of the yoke, but it is all there still. And this is a nice length. It goes past to about mid hip down here, so I don't have to worry about bending over or anything. It's a beautiful, really nice blouse that I can wear. I can dress it up and wear with slacks or dress it down and wear with a pair of jeans. Um, I am actually wearing another version of the dress. This is the short version. It goes right below my knees and I've color blocked it. And on the pattern, it doesn't say that you can use a scuba knit fabric, but I like to experiment with my patterns and my apparel. So I thought, hmm, I'm going to try that anyways because I have that fabric in my shelf. So I did. I did alter it a little bit because I like to play with my patterns and I made it into a long sleeve right here that you can scrunch up a little bit because it is that stretchy knit. So anyways, it, it's comfortable feels like wearing a really big t-shirt and I think it would be really great. I'll have Naomi come over here for just a second and we're going to stand side by side. <laughs> Naomi was blessed with a beautiful curvy figure and I was not. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> we're different heights, totally different body yep. types. This is a size 12 and we can both wear the same size 12. Mm -hmm. So anyways, it's a versatile pattern. It goes from sizes zero through 22. So come and get one today because it's a beautiful design. Thank you. All right, and now we are going to do the demonstration. Um, Naomi was so wonderful. I had just barely learned how to quilt, even though I've been sewing for 24 years. I just recently got this job to start doing so fun. And so that means I've been quilting for two months. <laughs> so she was wonderful because I had to get all of these quilts done, and six quilts done in two months. And so she took my very first quilt and she quilted it for me. So as a thank you to her, I am actually making her a, this pattern, this dress. And here it is. Uh, one thing that I wanted, the hardest part of this dress, let me, this, fabric is really slinky it's shally and I'm making a fancy dress let me hold hold on let me find the right side okay I found it this is the top of the yoke in the back of the dress in the very back there's a little tiny box pleat right there and the hardest part is putting this concave Yay, it's staying. This concave curve right here to a convex uh, curve right here. So today for my demonstration, we are going to go over how you sew that seam to that seam together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two little ends right here and find my middle spot. Is there a pin over there? I did not become come prepared right away. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna find my middle spot right there. And I'm going to match that up with the very middle right here. I'm gonna put a pin in it. We're gonna open this really fine Shally fabric. It's going to be a beautiful dress when we're all done. Right, Naomi? Yes. She's so excited to wear it. She tells me she goes out to a fancy dinner with her hubby every year. Anniversary. Anniversary. Okay. We've pinned the middles, the two middles together right like that. We're going to take it over to the machine. 
and stay right here because I will demonstrate it because it won't be very easy to see in there. When I go to the, my machine, my foot is going to be right here. I'm going to take my two ends and put them together. And you don't want to pin your whole curve. We are going to feed it in as we curve together. Okay, right like that. We're going to start here. And as we sew, we're only going to sew about an inch at a time, the only part that lines up. And then we are going to adjust it, slide the bottom underneath, adjust it for about another inch or so, and then we're going to sew. So let's come on over to the machine and I'll show you how that works. All right, we've got our two ends that we've put together. Ah, remember, this is really slippery fabric. I should have, I should have picked out some cotton for you, <laughs> but I wanted it to be super fancy. Okay, we have our two corners together. So start us out right there. We are going to. Do you have one more pin? Mm -hmm. I was standing by Thank waiting. Thank you. <laughs> Before I do that, this is such fine fabric. I know there are other methods to get this through, but this is what I have found in a pinch. Works really great. Hold on, those two ends aren't totally together. Stay, yes, they will stay right there. I'm gonna put a little pin right here. I know this looks weird, but if we don't do this with our really fine fabric, and sometimes I've found this with cotton, when I'm starting an end right there, there's my five eighths. When I want to put a, a, a knot in the very end, I have punched my fabric down in the hole and then it's a misery trying to pull it out. So with this, I'm going to do a stitch or two right there. Then I'm going to go back and then I'm going to hold my pin and my pin is going to push my fabric through. <gasps> Ta-da! It didn't punch it down in the hole. Yay! I'm going to put that right there. Okay, and you can see how our fabric is starting to curve right there. So we're going to sew it only as far as it comes together. Okay, then I'm going to take my fabric underneath. I'm going to slide it so it goes more straight. I'm going to bring the top fabric over like this. I'm going to release my foot just a little bit so it releases this fabric behind. Drop my foot again and we're going to sew one inch. Okay, we're gonna do it again. I'm going to smooth out this fabric on this side. And we're gonna slide this other fabric over, right like that. We're gonna sew about an inch until it's starting to do that, right? I'm going to adjust my fabric underneath so we smooth out all the wrinkles. And I'm going to bring over that top piece right there feeling it with my fingers and here we go again oh, and now they're starting to separate Let me take that pin out in the middle center right there and can you see how this is starting to bubble right there just a little bit I'm going to lift my foot release the back fabric so it can curve and so that uh, extra bolt goes around back. Drop my foot there. Pull my chalet over just a wee bit. So they match up. We're gonna keep going. Oh, and I can feel my little pleat right there. There it is. We've made it. We're at the halfway point. This part is not as bad. Okay, I'm smoothing out my underneath fabric. I'm smoothing out my top fabric right here. Make sure all my fabric is going down 
It really doesn't matter what the fabric is doing out over here as long as all the fabric around here is nice and flat. All right, and can you see how it's bubbling right there? I'm gonna lift my foot and adjust the fabric, pull it over just a little bit, drop the foot, and that goes right away. It's a little bit fussy to do these curved seams together, but worth, worth the fussing, right? To get a beautiful two curves put together. And I'm feeding them in together as I go, readjusting the bottom fabric and top fabric. And we're just feeding those two seams together. They're just only going together really close together. Right there, I'm gonna lift my fabric, my foot to let the fabric adjust in the back a little bit. Moving my bottom part underneath there. And we've reached the end. Cut it. And we have a beautiful rounded seam, right like that. And that is how you get the yoke so beautiful and nice in the back. Then you're going to take those pinking, the pinking blade like Naomi had uh, shown us in the beginning. And then you're going to, here, let me put this down on the table so it doesn't slide off my hand. See how we have so much bulk in the, the extra seam allowance right here? You're going to take your pinking shears and you're going to cut it very close all the way around here because then your curve turns into a bias and it takes out all that extra bulk. And then you press it with your iron and it becomes beautiful and flat. And that's the hardest part of the dress pattern. Now we're gonna talk about the sashy pattern right here. This is our beautiful bag design by Sally Tomato. And this pattern comes with so many fun accessories. This is the pattern that I made, the, that I chose. Um, one thing that I love to use that 505 spray for was these little strips down the middle right here. My bag is made out of oil cloth. I have five kids. I need all my stuff to be like waterproof and super washable. So that's why when I found this, I said, oh yes, that's the fabric for me. So it's super slickery, but I wanted to get these little strips here on really nice and straight because it has top stitching. I sprayed it with the temporary 505 spray. I was able to place it right where I wanted to. Luckily, it doesn't dry right away. You have a little bit of wiggle room to get it right in the right place. And I was able to put my strips on there with the 505 spray and then top stitch it so they got they stuck to my bag there okay so the design itself is it's got nice foam interfacing in here so it has stays up really well it comes with a top zipper like this and i just found out that sally tomato also makes these i just used a, a metal zipper like it called for but Sally Tomino makes zippers that look like metal, but they're plastic. So that was really cool. It also has an accessory line. Are you going to talk a little bit more about I the accessories? About okay, I'll let Naomi talk about the accessories. But I'll show you some of the cool features of this. And then Naomi's going to show you her bag that she made. So inside our beautiful bag, that has just a little drop-in pocket right there. And then a detailed zipper pocket right here. I use cork on mine and we sell this here at Quality Sewing and it's just, it sews exactly like fabric. It is amazing, but it's cork with the gold accessories. And then you flip it around to the front here and it has a nice pocket 
in the front nice deep in inside pocket for like your sunglasses or you know whatever you happen to collect in your bag there um, Naomi's gonna talk about the accessories but I wanted to talk about the handles bringing your bag over here for just a second Naomi mm -hmm. in the original design they had you with this handle see how it's got this raw cool edge well, she used cork on hers and it turned out beautiful. The brown just coordinated with all the rest of the bag. So it was just two pieces or one piece. You fold it in half, top stitch it. But I use like utility vinyl, the one that you reupholster your boats with. So the underneath part was white and the edges frayed really badly. So I couldn't use that technique. But what I did is I just doubled the width of the strap and then I folded in the ends and then I folded them one more time. So I had a nice folded edge so you didn't see the raw, the white raw uh, frayed fabric underneath. Um, and I used just a glue stick to hold the vinyl down when I needed. So I put a, a little strip of glue stick on each side and then I folded those in. I put heavy books on it to make those edges to have it dry and then I did one more schmear of glue stick and I put it those together again to get this nice flat uh, binding right here and then I was able to top stitch it when it was all done so that's how you kind of alter your pattern to fit your fabric needs okay we're gonna turn the time over to Naomi's okay so here's my version of the Sally tomato bag and as you can see Looks exactly the same, same style, just different colors. I used a home deck fabric with two different types of Sally Tomato cork. I have Annie Soft and Stable for the exterior, and for the interior, I used an SF 101, and I have the zipper, which it's great to have the zipper, you know, if you ever have your purse fall in your car and then everything flies everywhere. So once again, the two pockets, I use this cork on the, inside and you know if you're ever sewing this cork on a pocket like this and you want to give it some assistance i will use some double-sided sticky tape um, and put that and then that way it doesn't scooch around as you're sewing that on um, but it's a, actually it's a nice size bag i at first was like oh that's a really big bag but then i put it next to my purse i'm like oh it's the same size so <laughs> it's funny how that works out and then we have the hardware kits and we have five colors and we have so we have rose gold gold antique brass uh, metal or is that metal or metallic uh, gunmetal and nickel and so in the little kit you will get the little zipper pull you'll get a little tag that says handmade and the magnetic so here's the magnetic here's the zipper pull and then back to here's the handmade and you know someone was even saying you know oh it'd be nice to add little feet on the bottom so you could get a, a little feet hardware set not for this bag but a different bag and put your own little feet on it and it's a great size and like i said it's got great pockets inside it zips closed and um i do like how there's she did her handles like i like them both but it's nice when you feel them like this is definitely lighter weight and that definitely has some weight to it so depending on which uh how you like your handles there's two different options for you so i'm going to first talk about our book so i'm gonna let the camera come around and the first book i'm going to talk about is best of moda bake shop And this one has 15 patterns in the book, and they're all by different Moda fabric designers, so you get a nice variety of uh, different authors in this book. So this book also has, let's see, what does it have? It has clear step-by-step -step instructions, and when I first saw it, I thought, oh, it's very traditional looking, but there's a couple surprises in there. So let's jump into the first pattern. And the first pattern is called Christmas Babbles. 
and it's a cute little wall hanging and we're gonna go just right over here and I'm gonna show you what mine looks like in person. And so it's small, so it's, um, so it's really qu uh, quick and simple to get done. You do have two and a half inch uh, ornaments on here. There are some small pieces, but it's a smaller project, so you won't feel overwhelmed like if it was a big, you know, 70 by 70 quilt. I think it'd be really cute if you have Christmas fabric that has cute designs and you could fussy cut each ornament, or you could take it to the next level and you could, before you put it together, embroider names on it. And so it finishes it off with this nice scrappy bind or border around it. And then I quilted it with this kind of swirling Christmas star design. And don't make fun of me. Yes, I put this on my long arm. I'm gonna make my long arm work. Um, I don't care what size it is. It probably takes me longer to load it than to quilt it, but there's so many design options. So I really love this. And then the back is just a basic tone-on-tone um, -tone white snowflake design. Now the next design, the next pattern in the book is called Vintage Checkerboard. And this one is 72 and a half by 84 and a half and it's right here on the edge. And I'm standing low so it looks much taller but I'll stand up here, how about? So this one, very simple. Jelly roll strip and then you pick a solid piece of fabric and you're going to make these strip sets. So you're going to sew, you know, a solid and then a jelly roll, a solid and then a jelly roll. And I know I say this all the time, but most important thing when you're selling, sewing your strip sets is you sew one direction and then you sew from the other direction and then back and forth because if you sew all from the same direction, what happens? It creates that curve and you're gonna be looking at your piece of fabric going, what's going on here? <laughs> so always sew back and forth, and then you're just gonna cut your strip sets and attach them around a, a larger square piece of solid fabric. Now there was enough of the jelly roll left to do a scrappy binding, and I quilted it with this traditional feather and swirls design, and if you know me, <laughs> I put my minky on the back I've got this fun, cuddly, soft minky. And it's funny because I told a couple people um, at our in-person ones, I was like, oh, you know, they were kind of stressing about something in their life. And I said, okay, well, go stand in between this quilt. It is a safe zone. <laughs> so, I mean, minky cuddle fabric, it's just, it's so wonderful and soft. And I just, I put it on everything if it's a quilt. If it's a wall hanging, probably not. So the last project I did in this book, this was the one that kind of grabbed my eye in this book. I saw it and I said, yes, I must make this. I already had a quilt pattern uh, that I purchased earlier this year. And I said, it was just meant to be. This one is called a light bulb moment. And here's what it looks like in the book. And it's right here. So I just love it because, I mean, it's, it's those old light bulbs and it just reminds me of childhood. You have the plug and then, at, it's hard to see, at the top there's the other end of the plug. But you have the rickrack. And so what you do, how you assemble it, is you kind of assemble it as a half, like a top half and a bottom half. You make your blocks and then before you sew them together, your top and bottom half, you will then attach your rickrack. So you're going to attach your rickrack to each half and that'll make it easy to handle, to maneuver, so you're not trying to wrestle around this big quilt top. Um, and then you will sew them together and then you add one last piece of rickrack that goes over the center line and then a little border that goes around the outside. And I said I had the perfect quilting design. I had these little light bulbs and I thought it just, it was meant to be. And so of course, you know, I had to go with Minky. And so I went with a green Minky on the back. And it's just, once again, soft and lovely. 
and it really kind of almost makes it reversible. Um, you know, I always tell people, think about the quilting because you could potentially be making yourself a reversible quilt. And hey, two for one. So that is, are the, those are the items I made out of the Best of Moda, and I'm gonna let Andrea talk about her pattern she made. All right. Well, for all you viewers, like I said, I am very new to quilting, two months into it. So these two books are my first two quilting books. Yay! So this has been a really fun experience. I've always wanted to quilt, but I have quilters in my family, so I just didn't have a reason to. But the reason why I loved this one, I've always wanted to make a traditional looking quilt. And so one of the first ones I chose out of here is called pinwheels and it originally asked for this thing called a layer cake but it did not know what that was so I just saw that it had measurements for binding I'm good at getting measurements for like how much fabric it calls for so I didn't know what a layer cake was so I just went to the store and picked out like six fabrics that I liked and then I got home and I read the instructions you should probably read the instructions first right especially if you're brand new brand new to it all well this actually took a layer cake so all the pinwheels that you see inside of there are actually different each one of the little blocks is different so i went into my little scrap pile that i had been saving for all for years and years and years since i was little and i was able to kind of piece this together so even though it asks for a layer cake this is an excellent quick um, quilt for uh, scrap too. It'd be really good for scrap. So can you explain what you learned? What is a layer cake for anyone else who may not know? Oh, that's really great. So a layer cake is actually 10 by 10 inch squares and they come in a variety of like 30 different designs, but all the designs and colors they all coordinate together, but they're all different inside that layer cake. So in actuality, if you buy layer cakes that, already, that are already made, they actually save you a lot of money because I bought all this other fabric, but I only used like enough for a little piece of layer cake. So anyways, those layer cakes are actually going to save you a lot of money. Um, but I did you know, I, I picked out my fabric along the edges and that is really what kind of tied all these crazy colors and things together. Even though it wasn't a layer cake, I thought it came together quite well. Uh, so I was experimenting with this pounce pad, kind of trace chalk um, design thing so I could free motion some of the, the feather look around the edges and I was going to do the entire quilt in that but then I realized it's white chalk and my quilt is mostly white and so it didn't work very well it sort of worked on this yellow along the sides so about I did one strip with trying to chalk it and then I kind of got the basic shape of the feather down so I just kind of eyeballed the rest of the feathers all the way around the edge and I thought okay that's good one of my other friends had given me a Walk 2.0 book that talks about how to top quilt if all you have is a walking foot. And that's all I had was a walking foot. So I decided to do what is called an echo stitch around the outside of all my pinwheels, the inside of the pinwheel square, and then around the, the pinwheels themselves. And I actually, I'm glad I did that because I feel like that echo stitch really helped my pinwheels to really pop out and come out. While the feathering around the sides just made it look really soft. So that was the pinwheels. That's one of my first experiments with, with quilting. Uh, the next one I wanted to show you was actually my very first quilting experience. And so all, at all my other classes, I tell all my ladies, this is my first quilt. It is right here. Ta da! <laughs> and in my house, this is actually a pot holder because I have five kids and we make a lot of big meals on, um, on cookie sheets. We do like roasts and bakes and things on those cookie sheets. So when we get it out, I put it on this, this big pot holder in the middle of the table. Um, this was called garden plots, 
inside the book. I will show you the original design. Look like this. And I thought, hmm, that looks like a fun, easy one to start with. This is the very first one I did. So I just didn't put the two strips on the side to make it rectangular. And then I free motioned. I got this foot that I'd had in my machine for 15 years, but had never experimented with. And I experimented with free motioning around the little flowers around the inside. And that was a fun experience and something small to start experimenting with. And then I just used those fun little designs along the edges to kind of quilt down the rest of the sides and the strips. And the back is just, just a, a pink that coordinates with the rest of it. But if you're scared to get into quilting or if it looks like you want to try out one block, this is a great way to um, try out a design before you do a really big one. And so that's what I did too. Um, one of the other gals suggested that I use Thinsulate next time I make some of these because I showed this to all my girlfriends and they all want a pot holder this big <laughs> with Thinsulate so it protects your table from those hot plates and things that you're going to put on there. So that's called Garden Plots. The next one that I wanted to show you is called Color Weave. And when I saw it in the book for the first time, I, I just kind of looked by it because it was okay, but it wasn't like my favorite. But then I looked at it again and I thought, ooh, that one's pretty easy. And I went into my stash. I had a bunch of fabric left over from making masks from COVID. And remember I told you I was a costume maker? We weren't selling costumes during COVID, but we were selling masks. And I had all of this pop culture fabric left over. And when I saw, when I looked at that pattern again, I thought, oh my goodness, this would be so amazing to make it look like a comic strip. And so I used the same comic, or like in this case, it's Star Trek, into these split pieces and I love the way it came out in this kind of pop culture, kind of nerdy uh, quilt. It's definitely for, for boys, that's for sure. Um, and going back to the, the Walk 2.0 with that walking foot, I just took my, my long ruler and the tailor's chalk and I went through corners like this, this way, and corners this way, so I made huge diamonds right here. And then I needed something to put in the very middle of the quilt. I'll flip it over here, maybe a little bit easier to see some of this right here. I needed something to put in the middle of these huge diamonds. So I took some graph paper and I measured from how tall I wanted it and how wide I wanted it. And I just graphed out like um, an action bubble, like where it says pow, bam, boom in it. and. I took my kid's trusty cereal box and I traced it onto there and made some fun, fun patterns right like that. Um, one thing I did learn as I was marking this, I marked my entire quilt with that tailor's chalk and then I went and sewed on my first my first little action bubble there and I rubbed off all the rest of the, the templates that I had chopped. So in the future, so you don't have to mark it twice, mark just one template at a time. So anyways, that was color weave right there. Now we're going to roll into our next book called Quilting Through the Year. And I loved this because it was very simple designs and really cute, uh, really unique designs. You can see some of them on the back here. They have all the different seasons of the year. And in this book, there's nothing harder than a half square triangle, quarter square triangle, and a corner flip. That's like all the complex it gets and you get these really fun designs out of it. Okay, the first one that we're going to talk about is called Heart to Heart. And I'll take this off so you can see the picture. Take off my post-it notes. So this was supposed to be a, a really nice size quilt, but thank you. You're welcome. 
My mom has a little cat and her cat took over one of her pillows on her bed. So I said, oh mom, I will make you your cat, her very own pillow. So I found this little bundle of fat quarter fabric with cute little cats on it and it just happened to have black in it too. And I used the darker fabrics to make the, the 3D heart shape. And it, let me tell you, it was so fun to put them together and see the hearts pop out when, when I made these all together. So I just put four of the little um, blocks together and to make a pillow. I used the 24 by 24 inch um, pillow that I got from the store. And you can buy it you can buy it anywhere where they sell just the plain pillow forms. And on the back here is fleece. It's a soft fleece for my cat, my mom's cat, because they live in Montana. And on the bottom here, I installed an invisible zipper. And then I, whenever you do fleece, especially if you're attaching fleece, because it's really stretchy to a non-stretchy fabric like cotton, you're going to want to put a backing on the fleece so the fleece doesn't get all stretched out and a different size than the front. So I used that same method, the, the simple walking foot method. I marked corner to corner, corner to corner. I marked some spots on there that looked great to me. I connected the dots and made squares within squares within squares just to tack down the, the fleece there. And then the method on the front here, I took one of my little skinny spools and I drew a little circle around it and I followed my foot around and around and around to get this kind of circular fun design. And let me tell you, I'm really grateful that it's only a pillow and not a full quilt. Okay, so that is heart to heart. The next one that I wanted to share with you ladies is called Freedom. Or gentlemen, if there are gentlemen online too. So I wanted to show you this because this was the first full size quilt that I thought, oh, I'm going to make this quilt, right? Well, when I looked at it, I thought, look at all those squares, right? I hope you're laughing at me because there's not one square in this entire quilt. So about halfway through, I wanted to cry because it's all half square triangles and half square triangle corner flips. But I learned so much and I was able to really get those half square triangles out really quickly. So come over here. I took this pattern and I love the bright colors of Mary Inglebright from my childhood. And so I just put a bunch of the fun colors that I thought looked great together and sew them all together. Naomi was so wonderful. Like I said before, this was the first full-size quilt that I had finished. And so she took it and she quilted it for me. It's got this fun kind of geometric new age little strip with all different size bubbles inside of there. And then, and then I just did a fun bright cheery yellow on the back. So that one is Freedom. And the last one, is right in the middle here. It's called Liberty. And I really love this. It's meant to be a table runner, but five kids, right, that are super messy. I will probably use this as a wall hanging, either right outside my door or right inside my door. I really, I love the 4th of July, and I love the red, white, and blue. Um, of course, I love Mary Inglebright, and this is vintage Mary Inglebright cherries that I put in the middle. I changed this. It was in the book, it was just supposed to be white, but I thought, oh, cherries are so 4th of July and American. So I put that in there. Uh, I did the echo stitch around the outside of the stars first, and then I echo stitched the inside of the stars. Then, because I only have a walking foot, I used a weave, a weave stitch and I did most of the straight stitches inside first. And then as I got up to go around the stars, I just kind of went inside and I just kind of moved my fabric around and got the squiggles to just kind of go all over the place and have a nice finished quilting 
quilting edge. And sometimes when it got really close in there, I would knot it and stop it and then move it out here and start again. So the Around the Stars isn't completely like continual, but I think it turned out okay after all. And I did, I did find out with this that there is a big difference between the outside and the inside of that quarter inch line on your foot when you're sewing. So when it says a scant inch or a quarter, when it says a scant quarter inch, they mean sew on the inside of that quarter inch line. And that's how you can get these perfect corners every time and patience. I did it really slow, but well, it felt like it was slow to me and, and I was able to get the result I wanted. Okay, and now we're going to turn the time over to Naomi and the things that she did. Okay, so for Quilting Through the Year, out of the, this book, my projects that I made, first I want to remind you, 16 projects in this book. You get four of each season, so that's great. I saw this book and I just, I love that it was year round and it gave me lots of opportunities to make stuff throughout the year. And so the first one is called Robin's Egg, and that's right here. And you'll see here in the book, it looks pretty similar. And this is a wall hanging that's 36 inches square. And I use scrappy fabrics, grunge, uh, different prints that I had. And like Andrew was saying, three types of blocks you make. And so if you can make those three, you can make all of these projects in this book. You know, you could easily take one of these blocks and you can make a pillow, a throw pillow out of it. You could make a table runner, you know, do it longer. There's lots of varieties you can do. Some people might only like the bird or the baby chick, so you can use which bird you prefer. And then for the binding, I did a scrappy binding around the outside, and I quilted it with this swirling uh, bird design. There's a little bird right there. And for the back, what did I, I just used kind of this blue uh, with white polka dot type of design. And this, you know, I think the smallest thing is on this one is the little chick's beak, but it's just so cute. I just love it. So the second one is called Pumpkin Spice. And in the book, it looks like this and it has a white background. So I, I loved it, but I don't like to do a lot of white backgrounds on my quilt. So Andrea is gonna hand it over to me and I'm going to show you what my version looks like. Thank you. Got it. So I did purple and I just think it, thank you. I think it just ties it together. It really just brings Halloween out. Um, you could, you know, same with the bird one, you could make pillow throws out of each block. I love the little crow down here. He's my favorite little guy. You could turn this into a Thanksgiving themed. You could just do the pumpkins, do more fall harvest colors, do a white pumpkin, do a more rich orange. Um, for the quilting, I just did this kind of Halloween themed with pumpkins and black cats and moons and bats and ghosts. And for the back, I did this Halloween glittery boo fabric. Thank you. Now, keeping with the theme of different holidays, different seasons, it's perfect timing because it's back to school and as kids are getting ready to go back to school and some have already started, we're gonna go look at this table runner. It's called Apple Crisp. And I stayed with the theme of three different colors of apples. And so right here you'll see I have three different apples. And I did grunge fabrics and then some textured fabrics. I quilted it with this really cute apple all over. And this is where I was talking earlier about picking a design and then making it reversible. So I did a very tan red on the front, but for my backing, I decided to do a, 
a grunge red. So now with that tan uh, quilting, you can really see all those apples pop out. So this is once again reversible. So if, with the table runner, you know, if you get something on the front, you just flip it over. And so this by far is, has been my favorite project to work on because the quilting just kind of tied it all together and I'm just, I'm in love with it and I can't wait for my kid to go back to school. No, check. <laughs> so those are the books and projects we brought in for you guys. And we are going to talk about a couple things before we wrap it up. So if you liked, commented, or shared, your name got put into the drawing to win a prize. So I'm gonna announce the first winner. The first winner will get this quilting book. And this is, the winner is Diane Straws. So if you, if you are Diane Straws, make sure to give us a call, um, or sorry, send us a message with your phone number and the store location that you would like your book sent to so we can get it to you. And then we have another winner. Okay, and this other lucky winner is Denise Gilbertson. And she, ooh, she got the book called Modern Patchwork. Look at all those beautiful designs. I can't wait to look inside of here. So mm -hmm. once again, uh, leave us a message with your phone number and the store location, and we will send it to your store for you. So we want to thank you all for watching us today. We appreciate all of you and taking the time and joining us. And whether you watch us here on Facebook or maybe you see us in the store, um, we just want to thank you. And we can't do this without you. Take care. Is there anything you want to say? Um, just thanks for watching and being with us today. It makes it really fun on our part. And knowing that we give can give prizes out and people are watching makes it really fun too. And okay, yeah. well, thank you all. And I hope you have a great day wherever you're located. Remember, we're in the Pacific Northwest and all the items will be on the Quality Sewing and Vacuum website until September 4th, I believe. And if you have any questions, please sure to drop those comments and questions into the box and we will get back to you. And I hope you have a great day.